everybody, this is John from Dunes Transmissions. Behind me is a big piece of red steel called a transmission dynamometer. A transmission dynamometer allows us to simulate a real world test without actually putting the transmission in the vehicle. I wanted to make a video to explain its functionality and why we decided to implement this piece of equipment in our test process for quality control. This is what I like to call the control center. This is where we monitor all of the internal transmission pressures, including main line, low reverse, overdrive, third gear, and governor. When we're running the transmission through its paces, we record all these pressures on a spreadsheet that's serialized to your unit. We also record. control all of our cooler flow and cooler pressure readings as well. This is the standalone controller, which is capable of controlling 47RH, 47RE, and 48 RE transmissions. Next feature we have on this transmission dyno is the ability to load the transmission. So it's not just free spinning. Now this doesn't simulate a thousand horsepower going down the drag strip, but it does put a load on the transmission that's enough to stop the output shaft and you know, ensure that things aren't free spinning. So once that's loaded up, there is an air brake on the back of the dyno. And that applies regulated air to the air brake, which is connected to the drive shaft in the back of the transmission, which is linked to the output shaft right here. All right, so these are the gauges that I monitor when I dyno test a transmission. Our top gauges here are going to show us the internal line pressures inside of the transmission. The bottom gauges that we'll pay attention to for this test is our output speed. This gauge will indicate a change in gear. When we have an ascending shift, the RPM will increase. And when we have a descending shift, the RPM will decrease. We will also see a slight variance in RPM when the torque converter goes into lockup. I'm gonna start the transmission off in neutral, then we'll go to reversed, and then we'll go to our forward gears. All right. There's our reverse pressure there on our low reverse servo. In the torque flight transmission, the reverse pressure is the highest. It employs the least amount of hydraulics. We have oil going to our direct clutch and our low reverse servo only. I'll increase RPM a little bit more. Got around 300 pounds at 1300 RPM. That's a healthy oil pump. Bring our RPM down and go to neutral. Okay, neutral. All right, let's hit first gear. Bring, some, bring our RPM up here. Spinning around 1400 RPM. Simulates the truck driving down the road. We've got oil on our low reverse servo, and we've got oil on our forward accumulator, roughly 140 pounds. Spinning 540 RPM on the output speed. Let's bump up the second gear and watch that output speed jump. Now we're spinning roughly 900 RPM and we can see that our low reverse servo has no more oil pressure on it. That's because our load band's off in second gear. I am testing a manual valve body, by the way. Let's hit our lockup clutch. Give some more RPM. All right, our oil pressure boosts 30 pounds. We have a slight increase in output RPM. Let's turn our lockup off. See the lockup speed decreases on the output. The lockup supplied speed increases on the output. Bring our RPM down, back down to 1400. Let's go to direct or third gear. All right, there's our third gear oil inside the transmission. Now, 
Let's hit lock up now. See an increase in output RPM when lock up's applied. We also see our increase in oil pressure. We know lock up's working in this gear. Come out of lock up, bring our RPM down a little bit. Let's shift to fourth gear. Now we're spinning nearly 2,000 RPM. I bet when we hit mock up, we'll get there. We've got 180 pounds, main line pressure. Fourth gear uses boosted oil as well. And this is the pressure that's on our overdrive piston in the transmission. Let's hit our mock up. Yep, we're above 2,000 RPM. Come out of lock up. See that drop off, so we know our lock up clutch is working in fourth gear as well. After we've executed all those functions, we know that our transmission works in every gear. And when this thing goes in a truck, we know it's going to work. There's no doubt in my mind. We're back to neutral. Turn our motor off. And we just conducted a full function test on a 47, 48RE transmission with a manual valve body. One other area I wanted to highlight on the transmission testing that we do uh, is our converter pressures. And we modified a transmission case there, put a hole in the side of it with a hole saw, and we ran some copper line to the oil pump so we could look at the actual pressures inside of the torque converter. It's got to be really low profile to fit because it's such a tight tolerance inside that bell housing. We did this because when we modify valve bodies, we always want to make sure we're not overcharging the torque converter, and we want to make sure that the converter doesn't balloon. If internal pressures inside of the converter get too high, that can cause a balloon converter, and that will lead to oil pump damage and potentially even thrust bearing damage in the engine. So those two gauges monitor our release oil and our apply oil. Now the interesting thing is when you apply your torque converter lockup, the oil switches and what once was the release oil goes into the, the cooler lines. And the cooler pressure in lockup increases quite a bit. I wanted to take a video of that function just as an educational, uh, for educational purposes. When you're driving the truck down the highway, you always notice, man, my transmission temperatures cool down. There's a couple reasons why that happens. First reason is the torque converter is no longer in fluid coupling. And fluid coupling is when the fluid is being churned internally. Think of it as two fan blades working against each other. And eventually that gets to the input shaft of the transmission and propels the vehicle. When you're in lockup, that's out of the equation and a lockup clutch is applied in the torque converter. So you take away the fluid coupling, so you're generating less heat because you're running a lockup clutch and you've got increased cooler charge pressure. So I'm gonna put this transmission in second gear lockup and just let you guys take a look at some of those pressures. I found it very interesting and I wanted to share it. Here we go. There's third, there's second. So, let me zoom in on those converter pressures there. The one on the right is our release oil. The one on the left is our apply oil. Watch what happens when I command lockup. Now our lockup clutch is fully applied. Now I'm going to release the lockup clutch. 
Now the lock-up clutch is off inside of the torque converter. About a 50 pound split. There's 50 pounds of what's called balance oil keeping that converter clutch off. Now, let's pan it over to our cooler pressure here. Right now, we're out of lockup. Watch what happens to cooler pressure when I command lockup. Much higher. Over 90 pounds. There's lockup off. Anyhow, I found that to be a very interesting little bit of information and I wanted to share that with you. Thanks for watching. Oh, and last but not least, once we dyno test one of our units, we put one of our dyno tested certified stickers on that thing so you know when you're getting it, it's going to work. Over and out.